What up, YouTubers? Well, this is part five on what to do with sprue. Today, we are making candles. Yeah, not scented candles. No, no, candles. Just regular candles that you can make and put on your base from simple bits of sprue. So, grab your frame, your sprue frame, like so, any will do, and cut out a nice strip. So make sure cut away from yourself, preferably on a chopping mat, and get a nice straight run. Now the longer it is, the easier it is to work with. So you can hold one end while whittling the other end. So I'll just get rid of this knobbly bit, don't want that. Cutting away from myself. Lopping a finger off on camera would be epic, uh, but I'm trying not to do it. So basically, get a roughly square bit of sprue like so. And then start getting rid of the harsh edges. So anything that looks remotely square, start scraping. Uh, if you have a small uh, modeling file, that's also acceptable, but I like using a blade like this purely because it gives a relatively smooth finish. A file might be a bit rough and then you have to use like a softer sandpaper, finer grit. But this is fine, you can whittle it away like this, not a problem. I mean, what I'm hoping to do with this is make a candle or two to go on a base, so it's not like I'm making parts for a whole army. I'm just going to decorate one base so I don't need very much. It's not very time consuming at all but see already straight away relatively smooth and relatively round. So I'm just going to get a little bit more there. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm imagining these things have been knocked around a bit not exactly made by Yankee candles here. This is going to be on a 40k base for me personally anyway So I don't think there's many candle makers In the 41st millennium, but that's relatively round And it's pretty smooth But if you're gonna sandpaper it get some nice wet and dry you can tell this is well used Been on lockdown for a while obviously Just run it in there It's pretty smooth anyway. So what I'm going to do now is cut this piece. Watch it fly across the room, never to be seen again. Nope, thankfully it's still here. So with this, I'm actually possibly going to make two candles. So it's a reasonable length for a base. So I'm not going to cut it perfectly in half because I don't want two candles the same. I'm going to have them side by side on the base like so. Tiny, tiny little candles. Right, some bits of sprue, put them to one side. And this, I like to use a pin drill. Now you don't have to use a pin drill at all. These are relatively inexpensive. You can see I've got a bit of paint on there because I've been holding a miniature on there while painting in the past. Um, and the idea is you can hold it like that, push down and you can you can drill. That's basically it. So you've got um, a shank that can go up and down. Or you can just use it by hand and work it like that with a very knurled nut, easy to hold and everything. And that's what I'm going to use now. You could use a very small Dremel or battery drill, something like that. Nothing with a ridiculously high speed. But I'm going to zoom in now. It doesn't work unless you make a noise. And I'm going to draw a hole, slap bang, in the centre. Now, why is he doing this? I hear you ask. Why are you doing that? It's because I want to put my candle wick in there. Now, you can stick something on the surface and use it as a candle wick. And that's totally fine. There's one. Or, you can drill a hole. And put the wick in, which will last probably a bit longer. Not likely to get knocked off that way. So I'm just going to drill a small hole. 
relatively small drill bit. Now I find a paper clip possibly a bit too thick so what I'm going to use is thick-ish wire. So you can use fuse wire, that's totally acceptable, totally fine. Uh, but I've got a bit of an old busted necklace. Yeah, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? But it's mainly for these crystals, for Outlands. So that's what I'm going to do, uh, because our game Outlands needs spice crystals. And you can make your own crystals. I've done videos on it in the past. But that would just look cool on a base for Outlands. So I'm just going to snip the wire. And we're going to feed it in the hole. So, yeah, decent hobby side cutters. Trusty old side cutters. At the ready. I'll pan back now. You don't need to be zoomed right in. I'm just going to cut somewhere along here. So, making sure I'm not going to lose all the beads. But, like I said, you can use fuse wire. If you want to make bigger candles for a different scale, possibly, put those crystals on one side. You might need those for something. Never chuck anything away, do you, Ross? And, hey presto, just cut a little bit of wire off. So, keeping the bit of wire safe to one side, I'm going to use a tiny little dot of super glue in my candle. Like I said, it doesn't have to be massively neat. Not at all, not at all. Because I'm gonna make. You see them a lot on like uh, Sisters of Battle miniatures and bases and things like that. And I'm gonna feed this bit of wire in that hole there, just like so, and just wait for that glue to go off. And when the glue goes off. You can trim it to appropriate length then. We'll come back once that's done. Okay, so grab your candle. Now the super glue should be fully gone off, so if I'm touching it, yeah, I'm okay, I'm fine. So you can see the tiny, tiny little wick. So I'm just gonna trim the wick to the length I like, but a little tip is to trim it slightly longer than you need because we're going to do a flame now. So, you can see the tiny little fella there. Get rid of this mat, maybe you can see it easier on the camera. There we go, see my dirty paint riddled fingernails. So, it doesn't look terribly neat right now. That's good, because how many lit candles do you know have been outdoors, blown around to look that neat? So what's going to happen is, the flame is going to flick around, melt the uh, the wax, and the wax is going to run down. So what I like to do is stick it to the base of the miniature first. Then, to make the, the flame and any wax that you want running down the side, you can use anything from liquid green stuff to um, fairly thick uh, plastic glue or a, a super glue, uh, more like a Yoohoo, so a, a thick super glue, not something thin like I use to stick the wick in. Uh, what I like to use is some of this. So anything will do, but uh, like get it from your local pound store, craft shop. It's basically kids art stuff, so it's slightly thicker. So I will show you on the wick here. Normally I stick it to the base so you can actually hold it in place. But I will show you now, just a little bit, just to make the flame. So the reason I did it longer is because if I didn't have the wick, there'd be nothing in the core of this flame to stop it from snapping off. So this stuff will dry hard does take a while, um, like 12 hours, but dries hard. Like I said, you can use green stuff, and I will show you on the second candle, green stuff. But that's what it looks like at the moment. And I'll stick it to the base, and then we'll work a bit of the wax down the actual candle itself. So I'll stick to the base and come back when it's drying. 
So what we have here is a Space Marine Primaris Sergeant. Now every Primaris Army is not complete with at least, um, sorry, Lieutenant, to apologise, without at least 50 Lieutenants in different poses. So here's one. Uh, of course it's the correct chapter, it's the Blood Angels chapter, and that's the only one you should really be collecting. <clears throat> no, I'm kidding, you can collect whatever you want. Not biased at all, right? So that's what I've used um, previously on one of the flames. So that was from the, the pound store. Um, so that's like the nail, kids' nail glue or the kids' glitter stuff. So what I'm using now is a little bit of liquid green stuff. Just to show you, you could use this. So I'll put it on the other flame. Um, the only trouble I find with liquid green stuff is um, it will shrink a little bit when dry. And it will give a slightly rough texture. But, you know, I'm just showing you what you could use. That's a bit of a small flame, isn't it? A bigger flame than that, don't you? That's slightly bigger, yeah. Keep adding to that. Okay, so... That's how big I want that flame, I guess. Just like that. Okay, so let's grab off the excess. Do, 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 do. Wash your brush out fairly with green stuff. I'm not really a fan of brushes. It will kill them. So that's what I've done so far. And like I said, you can use Yoohoo glue, which is quite a good glue. Um, I think it's only in the UK, but please correct me if I'm wrong. And you can just drizzle it down the side if you want some wax running down the side. But make sure the flames have gone off first so you don't want that still tacky just in case especially when you start painting it so we'll wait until this is fully gone off hard there's a joke there somewhere and then we'll start painting the candle okay so once the flames and any of the wax that you want to do down the side is dry it's the same process as you do the flame drill a little bit down the side to make a nice run of wax on this particular case, I didn't want to do it, and as you noticed, I have trimmed the wick a little bit on this one because it was a tad high. So that's personal preference, whatever you want to do. So, what I like is a little bit of this kind of colour. So don't go white on the candles because it looks a bit fake. So I'm going to go for a little bit of bleach bone. Just get a little bit on my palette. And cover the whole thing. So as per always, two thin coats. It doesn't have to be mega neat, remember, because these aren't going to be perfectly round. For 40k anyway, if you want to spend a bit of time making it really, really smooth, Totally fine. So I left a little bit of a, like a lumpy bit there, so it looks like wax is pulled over a little bit. And shape them however you want. That's the basic gist of how I want it to look. And I'll come back after I've applied with the second coat and it's all dry. Okay, so what I've done while waiting for that to dry is paint the wicks black. It's like a burnt wick. And as you probably noticed, I changed my mind more often than not. I have put a dribble of wax there, a dribble of wax there. You're going to have some kind of dribble, aren't you? The flame's going to be flicking around outside in the wind. Of course it's going to have some. So, <clears throat> with any raised areas, I like to spot a highlight of a little bit of white. So I'll just add a little bit of white to my palette. I'll just a little spot here or there right on the wax. Not a lot, just enough to catch the eye maybe. And a little bit on the edges. There. And of course, paint the candles however you want, this is just the way I do it. And 
like so. So it's just a little bit eye catching. That's all. Right, next comes the flame. So I like to start off light at the center of the flame. So I get myself a, a nice GW yellow here, but other yellows are obviously available. Just a little bit on the base of the flame itself. I might as well start off with the whole flame actually. Just like so. And the higher up I get, the darker I get. It's kind of like the reverse of how I paint everything else. It's like edge highlights are normally brighter. With flame, I find the tip is the darkest bit. There's a joke there somewhere as well. So I want to start off like so. Now you can push this as much as you want. And there's my thumbs in the way there. Sorry, guys. You can do a bit of object source lighting as well on the model. <coughs> or just leave it like that. So once that dries, I'll do maybe just the tips with orange. And then on top of that, maybe a little bit of red. And if it's a smoky candle, pop a bit of black on there. And that's basically the finished piece. But what you could do is thin out a bit of yellow and pick up the raised areas here and here, show that the light of the candle is reflecting. Depending how dark the surrounding area is, if it's the middle of the day, these candles are lit, you're not going to see a lot there. So you can do that with either a brush and water down a bit of yellow, or with an airbrush. You don't have to do it at all. It's how you think the surrounding area is going to be. Like, if it's pitch black, black as night, the whole of the model may be lit up. Obviously brighter there, and getting lighter there. And the back of the model is going to be quite, quite dark. But obviously I haven't made the back of the model dark, so I might just pick up a few little bits. Just thin out a bit of yellow on my palette. Start off. Picking up there, maybe a bit on the knee. Really get as thin as you can initially and start building up the layers. So, maybe wait until that dries, wet blend a bit more. An airbrush would be a lot, lot easier, but I'll mess around with that for a bit rather than waiting for it to dry, do a little bit, wait for it to dry, do a little bit. I'm actually going to do it on one hit off camera come back when it's done and you tell me if that's the kind of thing you like so there you have it so you could do it with either a brush and lots of lots of blends or with an airbrush but if you are going to do object source lighting just think how bright is a candle flame really going to be not that bright there's two candle flames there so it's going to be slightly brighter possibly um, but think how dark the surrounding is going to be, i.e. on the back of the model, how much shade. So I've got a little bit of shade on there, not a lot, so I could make it like a nighttime piece and then the, and the back would be really, really dark. Um, but just think, closer you are to the flame, the brighter it's going to be. So on the knee pad itself, it's slightly brighter. And also, on object source lighting, on the actual flame of the candle, on the wick, you've got to think it's also going to light up the top of the candle. So I've done that. And a little bit on the surrounding area as well. Not a lot. But it won't be instantly straight down the light. Obviously the light goes in straight lines. So it would be diagonal coming down from there and there. Illuminating the area. So I've pushed it a little bit. But that's basically what you can do with a bit of sprue. Make some candles. So any wick will do, so anything from fused wire to um, maybe a strand of string possibly, if, if you think that's too thick for you. But it doesn't cost anything, not really. We probably all have some kind of Yoohoo glue or green stuff, or that nail stuff's great in, in, a, in a pound store. Uh, rob it from your kids if you've got kids. Uh, all you need is a little bead of that. It's fantastic. You know, super glue... It's too thin, you want something a bit thicker. And PVA glue, 
take too long to dry and it's not thick enough really so you need somewhere in between so sprue whatever thick goop you want and a little bit of fuse wire a little bit of imagination it's all you need so there you have it something to make your bases a bit more interesting candles from sprue thank you very much for watching guys please hit the like button if you hit the dislike button please tell us why and see if we can improve next time thank you for watching